Sports presents Pennzoil at the Half, sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Hi, once again, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to Pennzoil at the Half. Our score at halftime, Kentucky leading Miami 25-19. I'm joined once again by Clark Kellogg. Just as you think that this may not be Miami's night, they come roaring back and they make it a ball game. Well, they're very disciplined, and typically they're very, a very efficient team. They haven't been so tonight, and yet they only trail by six. Zerbiak needs some help from his teammates, who are only one of 12 from the floor. He's made five of nine. And he's 15 of the team's 19 points. They trail at 25-19. Meanwhile, going on right now, now in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the East Regional Semifinal between 10th seed Purdue, 6th seed Temple, the Owl 61-36 leaders. Let's take you there now and join Vern Lundquist and Al McGuire. Under 13 to go now, Temple rolling 61-36. They had a 15-point lead at the half, fueled in no small part by a 10-point possession midway through the first half of play. Technical fouls called first on Jerron Cornell, then on Gene Cady, and once that 10 zip run on one possession was uh, was over this game decidedly in Temple's way. Well what happens with Temple they get the lead on you they Mickey Mouse you with their zone they're patient on their offense and their zone gets stronger with the lead. From way outside Eldridge that's for three. Purdue has been uncanny from three point range tonight but despite that they find themselves down. 10 of 14 from three point. How can you be 10 of 14 and be down 22 points? That doesn't make it possible. Well, in part, Al points in the paint. 27 to 9 in favor of these huge Temple Owls. Yeah, with their size and their body, if anything that hurts Purdue outside of Cardin, LeBron Cardin, they don't have any true bodies out there. They're really too thin to hammer and bang. I think that's what happened to them this year in the Big Ten. Winner gets Duke Sunday afternoon. Duke a convincing victor over Southwest Missouri State. You think this matchup could present Duke problems? Right? We yes, but I, well, I, I want to wait a little while before we talk about it because okay. it is not time. The game is, you know, still a lot of time here in the game, and Purdue could make a run because we had that run with College of Charleston that went 25 and one was unbelievable. Oh, he's been hot. He, he, he has to be, he got to be the hottest guy in the uh, in the six or seven games that I've done in the NCAA tournament this year. 6'5 sophomore from Baltimore. There's Mayfield. Another three-pointer for Purdue. Mayfield's name is not on the back of his uniform because he forgot to bring his uniform, the top uniform with him today. Normally wears number 20. He's decked out in 25 tonight. 11.22 to go. Karcher Sanchez. Lamont Barnes, the big man for Temple, has been limited to six and a half minutes tonight because of foul trouble. He only played five in the first half, picked up his third foul early going in this half. Here's Karcher again. Nope. But good position on the rebound. Another board kicked outside by Keaton Sanders. Now they got the ball in the right man's hand. He has to put it down. Another five count once you start your dribble. Then you get another five count when you pick it up. He's going to kiss the glass. He kissed the glass again. Pepe Sanchez and the Temple Owls putting on a show. 65-42 as they come up on the halfway point in the second half in East Rutherford. Now, earlier tonight at Continental Airlines Arena, Duke's Blue Devils 78-61 over Southwest Missouri State. And the Duke band was drumming up support for the Devils early on. Alan Phillips finding an opening. They stay clean. Caught up with Mateen Cleaves and asked him about the play in the collision with Nahara. Mateen, how was that nice little run with Nahara in the backcourt compared with uh, some of your other collisions? I mean, it reminded me of my old football days. You know, it, it was a hard collision, you know, but, um, you know, I, I pray that he's all right, you know, and I'm all right, so, you know, the, the best came out to it for do you even Do you remember what happened? I just remember you didn't even see him coming, did you? It felt like I ran into a brick wall, you know, that, that's all. But, you know, it, thank God that both, both of the guys are right. Well, Mateen Cleves appears to be all right, and the word from the Sooners head trainer, Alex Brown, as follows. He suffered a grade one concussion. He suffered a chipped tooth. He took six stitches for a lacerated chin, and x-rays for a broken jaw were all negative. He will be reevaluated tomorrow upon his return to Oklahoma. We want you to join us tomorrow here on CBS Sports. Here's what's coming your way beginning at 1230 Eastern Time. Live coverage, men's Division II national championship game from, from Louisville. Kentucky Wesleyan meets Metropolitan State. And then after the division, 
Division II title game, the Road to the Final Four show. We bring you the latest news and previews of regional championship action at 3 p.m. Eastern. We will be joined by Utah head coach Rick Majerus. 3.30 Eastern regional finals doubleheader begins. Game one, 10 seed Gonzaga, top seed UConn tipping at 3.40 in Phoenix. 6 p.m. Eastern time from the south in Knoxville. Fourth seed Ohio State against number three seed St. John's. That's all coming up tomorrow here on CBS. We'll take you back to the second half of the game you're watching between Kentucky and Miami University. Scott Padgett, one of eight different Kentucky Wildcats to have scored in the first half of this game. Pennzoil at the half has been sponsored by Pennzoil. Specially formulated for today's stop and go driving. Stop, go, Pennzoil. Nothing in the first official can say, hey, guys, we missed that one. They conferred, and you can see that Charlie doesn't like it at all, but it was the fair thing to do. Saul made an incredible play there, catching the ball in the air after he left on the other side of the three-point line. Where he landed didn't make any difference. So the halftime stat sheet is invalid. They'll have to do up a new one. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Seven-point lead as we start the second half. Kentucky's bench outscored the starters 14 to 12 in that first half. And how many teams can say that against a team that plays as solid a defense as Miami does? And an illegal screen against Kentucky called against Bradley. You know something I noticed, Jim? The starters cheer more when they're on the bench for the subs than the subs do for the starters. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to start a little dissension yeah, here. They so. want a little more time. Yeah, if I'm one of those starters, I say, hey, guys, start rooting over there. McGuire up off the bench, so he's not going to come in with the whole group this time. Going to come in on his own. Inside, Estick makes the move, flips it home. Really the key guy for this team in the second half for Miami. He did not score in the first half. 0 for 1, really didn't become a factor. They've got to use him down the low post. Hashimu stolen. No. Serbiak on the line. Now, in that first half, Miami had a drought. Without a point, 8 minutes, 25 seconds. And outside of Zerbiak's 15 points, the rest of the team was 1 of 12 from the field. Now they come out here out of the locker room, and Estick makes the first attempt. They're out rebounded 20 to 9, and that's where Kentucky had a huge advantage. Padgett gets past Zerbiak, banks it home. For Padgett, 5 points on the night. Tell you, messed this pretty good with that ball. He hadn't had many guys been able to stay with him or preventing penetration. Outside, that'll be the third on Scott. And he's saying all ball. You know, I really believe, although Pageant's a good defensive player, Zerbiak has shown us tonight that he can handle any kind of defenders. And probably Evans is the best matchup, as I said in the first half. They guard him. Pageant's going to have to sit down. And, you know, Charlie Coles is is taking Tubby out of what he normally likes to do, and that is to substitute by units. Kamara comes in. He had four points in the first half. Zerbiak quickly fires it. And McGlure had position on Estick. You know, I thought that they would go back into Estick again. You know, he got something nice going to start of the second half. Allison jumper. Evans underneath. And one. Well, uh, Hishamu, the warrior, right? That's what it stands that's for. That's what it translates to. And, uh, and that's what he is. I'll never forget last year, if they want to talk about winning the national championship, I think of the comeback against Duke, where he was just a guy that would not be denied in that sequence where they just took over the ball game the last eight minutes. Well, there was the mile-high salute for the Broncos this year. There's the Wildcat salute. And Evans completes the three-point play, back to a double-digit lead. Kentucky picks up full court, but Mestis really does a good job breaking it down with the dribble. The winner of this game to face Michigan State Sunday in the regional final. It's McGlure down there on Estick. Frierson, they need him in this half. He has not made a shot from the field, now 0 for 6. Jim, you're talking about Stewart's 0 for 2. Frierson is 0 for 6. Those are guys that they had to get some points from. And the rebounding numbers continue to grow. Yeah, quite telling. Allison, open three from the wing. Way too long. And Estick touched it last. Ooh. 
goes over that national championship cheerleading squad for Kentucky. Well, they got something like four years. Or they kind of own it. They're kind of like Kentucky getting to the final <laughs> four. Now he gets to reenact it. He was trying to draw the charge. Yeah, they're accustomed to national championships in their own right. Absolutely. I think something like eight of the last 12 years, they've either won it or come in second. But Nest is staying right with Turner, who normally can break people down with that dribble. They don't beat the shot clock. Now, why did Turner not take it all the way? He might not have realized that that was that little time on that clock. And Tubby says, Tubby can't really get comfortable this second half. You notice? Now he's... He's upset with Quickly his ball called on Prince. He might have a 10 point lead, but this team is not really functioning that well. And give credit to Miami's defense. Miami down 11 at one time in the first half. And traveling. Miami had to come from behind in both of its wins, and New Orleans came from six down against Washington with 13 minutes to play. And Utah at one time had a three point lead in the second half. And there's Prince, the freshman from Compton, California. And Jim, turnovers, too. They had 14 assists and only six turnovers in that ball game against Utah. Tonight, because of Kentucky's uh, superior talent base, they're turning that ball over a lot more. Boy, look at Nestis can really stay with a guy off that dribble. Zerbiak and McGlure were banging inside for a moment. It's this Miami team that prevented a rematch of last year's final. They're going to call Zerbiak for too much contact. You know, give McGlure some credit in the head game there. He can afford to swap fouls with Zerbiak because they can come back with Bradley, but Miami's got nowhere to go if Wally gets in trouble. So that's a good move by McGlure. That's the second on Zerbiak. And Wally's got to let the ego trip go on that one because he can't afford to get a pick up another cheap foul. Tomorrow, way out. Uh, he, he has just been so productive. How about his efficiency tonight? Inside, outside. Sit two outside shots, total of six points in all. Zerbiak stuck. Turner steals it, misses the lay in. And a foul called against Kentucky. I'm not so sure, Jim. The ball didn't hit underneath the back of the backboard on that. That should have been Kentucky's ball out of bounds. I may be wrong on that. No, I guess maybe it hit Turner. I think it hit the backboard at one point. Well, they call the foul after the missed lay-in. Turner slapped with that, his second. Serbia can't run the baseline. He got caught for that in the first half. Got a double team right there, but... Boy, there's Evans pushing Taylor off. So it, still pretty good turnover ratio considering what Kentucky's thrown at him. But nothing like they've been able to do in the previous two games in this tournament. Taylor drives and McGlure bangs him to the floor. And a little extra by McGlure. Well, the West Regional Final will come tomorrow and UConn, of the one seed, you'd have to say the path of least resistance. When you look at the Huskies road, at least to the Elite Eight, gone through Texas, San Antonio, New Mexico, Iowa, and next they'll take on a 10 seed, Gonzaga, and everyone in America just uh, mesmerized by Gonzaga's play to this point. Jim, here's a young man that uh, has had a very unusual career. 29 starts as a sophomore. He had high games of 27 against LaSalle and Ohio U. Five 20-point games. Now, he's had some arch and physical problems in his foot. But uh, now here he is. Had eight games this year he did not even play. He can't get back on track as a scorer. Miami only 29% from the field in this game. Red Hawks trail by 10. They'll work on the clock, which is now under 90 seconds. Maynard Lewis guarding Sanchez. Jumper, Barnes, yep. He's got three quick baskets. He, he wants to get into the scoring column. 
Cornell into the corner for Cardinal. Back outside, Lewis Smith. Allison taken away by the Temple Owls. Under a minute to go. Temple Duke. Eastern Regional Final. Sunday from East Rutherford. Come join us and enjoy Duke. One of the better teams ever. Ten seconds on the shot clock. John Cheney's Temple Owls go to 24 and 10 for the season. Offensive board into the corner, Brokenboro. Rollerson as Cardinal took the charge and uh, should be given a little credit for that one. For taking that charge, Cardinal should end up getting four foul shots. Not only, not only a one and one. A one against a six Sunday at 2.40 Eastern time. Duke, winners of 30 in a row, one defeat this season. John Cheney's team now has won 24. And they advance to the Elite Eight. Smith. Allison. Smith will try. No, he won't try it again. Cunningham will. That's for three. Well, Purdue for the game hits 13 of 20 from three point range. And they wind up losing 77-55. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Jerron Cornell, 14 first half points. And Mark Karcher from Temple, 21 points and four rebounds. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. That a Chevrolet tradition for 28 years. 77-55, Temple Duke coming up Sunday right now. We go back to New York. Here's Greg Gumbel. All right, Burns. so the Purdue Boilermakers, a valiant effort, but they fall short. The Temple Owls live to fight another day. They meet the Blue Devils on Sunday. Let's take you now to St. Louis. Midwest regional semifinal going on there. Kentucky Wildcats and Miami. And let's join Jim Nance and Billy Packer. And, uh, well, Kentucky's uh, ardent follower, Miss Judd, who's here again tonight. And the Cats are about to start booking some reservations for Sunday. But let's not give up on Miami quite yet. Have... Well, Jim, you know, I think it was pretty obvious from the beginning, and in fairness to Miami, they're, they're playing against a much more talented basketball team, a much more deep, a team with much more depth than they have. But they've made a really valiant effort, and on the defensive end of the floor, they show how disciplined that they are, but they're just against a superior club here. Padgett got away from Lacuna, and he adds to his total. 15, 12 of them coming in the second half. Padgett really now taking on the challenge to stick with Wally. He doesn't want to see him get off anything else. We had some fun this week. We're going to have a one-on-one -on -one at the line talking about Wally Serbiak and how he was recruited out of Long Island. His senior year in high school, Wally averaged 36 points a game, which was two points per game off the all-time Long Island single-season average. You know who holds the record, 38 points a game in one season? Long Island. I'd say Art Heyman. Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Now that went on to become a little Hall of Famer. In is that right? Yeah, how about that? Talking about Jim Brown, football player. And he he not only averaged 38 at Manhasset his senior year, did Jim Brown also went on to become, of course, a great lacrosse player at Syracuse. Yeah. He's still the only player in Long Island high school history to have back-to-back 50-point -back scoring games. You know, and, and Jim, when you talk about him, everybody I've ever come across talking about Jim Brown as as far as a like a lacrosse player, they talk about you know we're talking about the, one of the greatest football players of all time. They said that he, he was in, unstoppable. If that had been like a major sport in the United States, he was unquestionably the best that ever played. That's why when you start talking about greatest athletes of the century, oh yeah, you, you have to have them right up there. I mean, you start look at this basketball record we just mentioned. Yeah, lacrosse All America. Football, football Hall of Famer and Padgett will shoot another let's check out the CBS Sports line stat of the game we'll go with the rebounds here Kentucky more than double the total of the Red Hawks and for complete tournament coverage go to cbs.sportsline.com
Padgett, the senior, is going to extend his career by at least one more game. And it was in doubt in New Orleans until he buried the three, the three of the tournament to this point. Tied their biggest lead of the game, 17. Ryerson, nice move. A little up and under. Now this young man right here, you know what he's got a chance to do is to join only three guys, all of which went to Duke to play in four Final Fours. Oh. Evans. It's, what is he going to call that? Serbiak says, wait a minute, I didn't touch him. The call made from half court. And he's one foul away from closing out his college career. He has played every minute of this game. He got out a little bit in that Washington game. Remember, Jimmy sat down for less than what, about 30 seconds. Yeah, less, so, so less than a minute. They gave him the full 40. They gave him the full 40 in that game. Young man uh, at the line now, Evans. And what a boost. And he started his career at Manhattan. Many of you know that, but they were able to make quite an upset run in their uh, in their tournament appearance when he played for them. Knocked out Oklahoma, which was a four seed. And hey, let's think about Fran Fraschella. Here he's got this guy playing at Kentucky, who he recruited, and yeah. he's got the St. John's kids playing in the, in the uh, final eight, a great many of which he recruited to St. John's. What a job Mike Jarvis has done with oh, that, boy, sensational. that team that, this year. And as he said in an interview with Al McGuire earlier this year, that's my team now. Well, and they love to play for him. You can see that in the practices we've attended. Mestis misfiring, and it's Patchett again. He's everywhere. Seems to just get stronger now as these games go on. And look out. Well, here's the difference, too. You're talking about Kentucky with fresh legs. You're talking about Miami <laughs> kids that have been out there basically with little or no rest at all. Mestis and Zerbiak and, and Frierson, I believe, have played all 40 minutes or, or every minute of this game so far. And you saw the freshman Allison bowing down to the move by the senior Evans. Zone defense just trying to take a little time off the clock for Kentucky. In and out for Wally. He faded a little bit on that one. He's got to be a little tired. You know, he's been hammered by everybody out here tonight. He's been guarded by about five different players of all different kinds of sizes. He's 7 of 14 from the field, the Zerbiak, with 20 of their 34. There's a tired foul. That one by Frierson. It just, the legs just can't get there anymore. Moo Miami Evans. Of course, his huge game this year against Maryland. One of the best individual performances uh, on the year. 31 points in that game was sensational. And then kind of went into a little bit of a slump, Jim, when he was asked to play the, the two spot for Kentucky. He's so much more adept at playing the swing forward position. Anthony Taylor will return. I'll tell you one other thing about Taylor. You were chronicling earlier how he was such a scorer a year ago, starting all the games and had a couple of 27-point efforts. He's the fourth all-time high school scorer in Massachusetts history. He's fourth, and Wayne Turner of Kentucky is third. Anthony Taylor out of West Medford, Mass. How about a Ramil Robinson in that, in that uh... Well, you, you go Brian Edwards, one. Ronnie Perry, one on the Holy Cross, right. two. Then Turner, and then Taylor. Added away and another steal. Another theft by the Cats. Miami players really tired now. Inside Evans for two more. Yeah, and what's happening, Jim, is that the players are so tired and they've accepted their fate that they are not going to win this game in advance and their feet just not getting them to the spots like they were earlier in the game. And that's not to take anything away from Charlie's team because they have really put a valiant effort out here tonight. Sometimes you just play against better people, that's all. Well, we can look at the makeup now of the Elite Eight, and three ones have made it to a regional final, everyone but Auburn. And, uh, well, if you want to count Temple as a six, as a Cinderella, and I think you should, 
You got two Cinderella's then. Temple is a six seed, and Gonzaga, of course, the Cinderella of all as a 10. That ball was tapped. It's not backcourt. Jim, this, uh, this Kentucky team with eight losses is the most since 1990. And four of those defeats were in the seven, seven of the last regular season games, you know. Badgett, that did Trying not to beat touch the rim. clock. Yep. Mestis able to save it. Yeah, Kentucky late in the regular season started to lose road games in conference play. Four in a row, in fact. Zerbiak, three more. I remember they lost that last game of the regular season to Tennessee that we had. And that knocked them out of that first place spot. And what, what I thought was really going to hurt them in the SEC tournament, but they went back to what they owned and took that over by beating Auburn in the semifinals in the big game there. McGlure to Turner. He wants to take a jumper, and he'll shoot two. Taylor, that's the two Massachusetts players on that scoring list colliding. Saturday on CBS, these two private eyes have what it takes to be heroes. Maybe it's because they learned from the best. Chuck Morris, from the producers of Walker, Texas Ranger. Sons of Thunder, Saturday on CBS. Well, Wayne Turner now to the line. Think about some of the added pressure heaped, heaped on his shoulders this year, not really with a solid two guard to play off of. And during the span of his career, there have been the names of Derek Anderson, Ron Mercer, Alan Edwards, Jeff Shepard, Cameron Mills. And uh, well, once the season washed out, it was uh, a freshman who emerged as his backcourt mate, Desmond Allison. That's right, one more round for the Cats coming up. Monday on CBS, more people discovering that everybody loves Raymond, one of the funniest shows on television. Once you start watching, you'll know why. Monday's at 9 Eastern here on CBS. The chair of the NCAA Basketball Committee is the athletic director at Kentucky. Great man, C.M. Newton. Not much he hasn't done in basketball, and he's given so much to the game. USA basketball president worked so hard behind the scenes in international ball trying to do things that are quality for the game played for Adolph Rupp been awarded the 1999 Naismith outstanding contribution to basketball honor by the Atlanta tip off club and well deserved got to give the championship trophy to his coach last year who knows it could happen again May uh, March the 29th at St. Pete. Well, you know, Jim, what's also headed for a showdown? We've been talking about this. People said, what's the team of the 90s? That's right. There's a possibility it could be that settled, it be settled in one game. In one game <laughs> on one floor. Not that there's enough pressure already in a national semifinal. Mestis, two on the shot clock. Now, that's what's so healthy about college basketball is that nobody has to do it with votes. You know, you get an opportunity to right. lay it on the line. Forget the opinions. You jump it up in 40 minutes of basketball. A whole decade riding on 40 minutes. That's something, isn't it? Talk about two great traditions if it turns out to get to that point. Both Duke and Kentucky will have to win one game to set up that match. Mestis with the rebound. Zerbiak on the run. This must feel for Zerbiak a little bit like his last high school game. Yeah, against a guy by the name of Elton, Elton Brand. Brand of <laughs> Peak Skill High School Peak at the school, time. Yep. And he was, most of that game, Zerbiak was triple teamed. And uh, Peak Skill kept just two players in the paint, anchored down low by a little known sophomore, Elton Brand. I think probably, uh, maybe Governor Pataki probably uh, stuck a hand or two in there. That's his high school. And it's going, That's, uh, hold on, it's going against Miami. M Emsminger and McGlure. McGlure doesn't get a, lot, get a lot of sympathy from referees. You know, I ever noticed that? You know, let's uh, give a salute here to Charlie Coles and his effort to come back this year after last season ended with a heart attack for him in the MAC tournament. He was revived on the sideline by a medical staff. It took 20 minutes to to even revive him to get him to a hospital where he was in critical condition. A game was stopped for two hours before it resumed once they heard that he had survived. 
And look at this, they're bringing Serbiak out. Well, that was some tournament performance to remember. He scored 56% of his team's points in three games. There's his dad. He's got to be very proud. All those days they worked in the backyard, working on that shot. And I guarantee you Walt was a tough taskmaster for that young man. Wally's uh, coach, uh, Coach Coles, called him World for short. And Wally's World uh, has come to an end here at the Trans World Dome in a Miami uniform, that is. But uh, boy, what memories he's left us. And oh, Taylor rattles home a three. Maybe uh, something for next year to build on. 58-40 Kentucky. Well, you heard Charlie Coles at the top of the show saying playing Kentucky is like going to the dentist. That's right. And, uh, and I bet you he kind of feels like that right now and the fact that they just had too many weapons for him to handle tonight. Off Kamara. Well, Wally had told us before the first game of this tournament, he was going to the Final Four to compete in an all-star three-point contest. Here's Frierson. Last shot is a collegiate. It's a three. He'll come on out on the next whistle. But for a while, Wally uh, looked like he might make a little run at the Final Four in another capacity. Instead of an all-star three-point shooting contest, he was two wins away from carrying his team there. Final 20 seconds and the Elite Eight will be official. Tackett back of the rim. Maybe it won't be Frierson's last shot. Here he comes. Is it, what, what's here? Charlie is calling a timeout so Frierson can come out. And he points to him. Yep. yep. Damon Frierson was Mr. Indiana out of high school. Came in with Wally and Mestis, and they'll say good night tonight. Sunday in St. Louis, Big Ten will meet SEC. Michigan State and Kentucky will solve the last piece of the puzzle with Sunday tip time, 5 o'clock Eastern time. Wally Zerbiak, the Chevrolet player of the game from Miami. Scott Padgett for Kentucky with 14 coming in the second half. Final seconds here. In St. Louis, will they score or will they close the tournament with precisely the total Wally had in game one? There you go, the 43. Little twist of irony, and Tubby still has not lost a tournament game <laughs> at Kentucky. Charlie staggers to the half court <laughs> as if, like, you've knocked me out. Miami ties a season low 43 points. Scott Padgett excels again. We've got Kentucky and Michigan State Sunday. Kentucky to the Elite Eight. Greg Gumbel coming up in just a moment on the road to the Final Four. Greg Gumbel back in New York. The Kentucky Wildcats an incredible 20 and 1 in the NCAA tournament since 1996 with tonight's 58-43 win over Miami. Billy Packer standing by in St. Louis with the Kentucky coach. Right after these commercials. Lewis, Kentucky wins it 58-43. A short while ago, Bonnie Bernstein caught up with Miami coach Charlie Coles and the Miami star, Wally Zerbiak. Charlie, you talked about the importance of keeping this game. The rest of the team struggling from a shooting standpoint. You had to put the game on your shoulders. Um, not really. I just, uh, you know, wanted to try and do whatever it took to win. And it just seemed like their zone, um, you know, we had no answer for it. And there was no tactical thing we could have done because I'll tell you, they stick their long arms out. And it's tough to get a shot up. You rush every shot because they're really long at every position. So, um, you know, I was just trying to do whatever it took to keep us in the game. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough. Guys did a great job. Coach did a great job. And it's been a lot of fun this season. Well, for you and Damon Frierson and John Estick, the three seniors, it's been a great year. Congratulations, and we'll see you down in Tampa in a three-point shooting contest. Yes, I am, and, uh, you know, I'm just going to take some time, uh, you know, get back to class and, uh, you know, just finish out the year. It's been a great run, like I said. I'm real proud of how my, how my uh, time at Miami went. You know, I always remember uh, Miami. I had a lot of memories, and it was a lot of fun. Wally, Charlie, thanks very much, Thank and congratulations you. on a great season to you both. Thank you. Okay.
All right, Bonnie, do you think Miami hates to see Kentucky coming in the last 18 meetings between these two teams? The Wildcats have won 18 times. They qualify to move on Sunday to play Michigan State. The Spartans knocked off Oklahoma tonight 54 to 46. Michigan State has won 21 in a row. Kentucky is rolling. What do you think about this game? Well, both of these teams are excellent defensive teams. I think Kentucky's size could be a problem for Michigan State. Both teams have shown they can play a number of different styles in different ways. Again, I think the depth and size of Kentucky may give them the advantage, not to mention that tournament championship experience. You can't discount that. All right, Clark, we'll take a time out here. And Clark and I will continue with more from our studio in New York in just a moment. We remind you that coming up next, it's your late local news, followed by Late Show with David Letterman. And Dave's guests include Tom Hanks. That's coming up next here on CBS. We told you about the Midwest. Here's what happened in the East tonight. The Temple Owls move on to play Sunday. 77-55 winners over Purdue. They shot 53% from the field. They qualify to play the top seed, Duke Blue Devils. Duke, 78-61 over Southwest Missouri State. So it'll be Duke and Temple on Sunday. Size it up. Well, and when you look at this game, one of the things you know Temple is going to do is is rebound and defend. The thing you don't know is how they're going to play offensively. If they can bring the same kind of offensive production that they had tonight to the floor against Duke, they've got a chance. They might even have to exceed what they did tonight offensively. But Duke, I think, just has too much firepower to be beaten by Temple. All right, Clark, we have another big day on tap for you tomorrow. Here's what's coming your way on CBS. 1230 Eastern Time is when we begin live coverage of the Men's Division II National Championship game from Louisville. Kentucky Wesleyan meets Metropolitan State. And after that, the road to the Final Four show. We bring you the latest news and previews, regional championship action. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We're joined by Utah head coach Rick Majerus, so someone signal the company chef. Then at 3.30 Eastern Time, a regional finals doubleheader, game one, 10th seed, Gonzaga top seed UConn tip at 340 Eastern in Phoenix and then in the south 6 p.m. Eastern time from Knoxville fourth seed Ohio State against number three seed St. John's that's all coming your way tomorrow afternoon begins at 1230 Eastern time former partner Clark Kellogg and for all of us here at CBS Sports thanks for joining us everyone good night